So I got a 3D printer. Now, actually this, this goes back a little over a year. When we were working on our old house, getting that ready to sell, I ordered some ceiling fans because we had fans in every room, but they were really old. And so I just wanted to replace all those, found some that we liked, they came with remotes. The problem was the ones that I bought didn't come with a little wall mount for the remote. And so the problem there is, okay, well, where do you put the remote? It's just going to get lost. Like it was, it was a pain. And prior to that, I always thought 3D printers were kind of neat, but I never really saw a use case where it would make sense for me to get one. Um, cause all I had ever really seen was them being used to make like comic book masks and knickknacks and stuff like that, which that's just not my, that's not my game. Um, but then I saw a video from, I believe it was shop nation, the shop nation channel. I'll post a link to that. Uh, and he was showing a, I believe it was a dust collection adapter for a rigid, uh, chop saw, which I have that saw back there and the dust collection sucks. And he was going through the process of, um, 3d printing those and kind of the design process and just a bunch of things that really caught my attention. And so that got me thinking, Hey, wait a minute, I've got these. Uh, remotes that need some type of a storage solution. Maybe, maybe I can make this work. I did I went back in high school. I did a lot of drafting, uh, started out just, you know, your traditional paper drafting. And at the time, like AutoCAD was getting started and, and what was then known as CAD key. Um, so I got really into the computer aided drafting. And I mean, that's way, way back. That's in the early nineties. So it's, it's been a few minutes anyway. Uh, at that same time, as he was going over, as I, when I watched that video, I started researching 3D printers a little bit and thought, well, some of these, they can, you know, they can get pretty pricey, but some of them are a little more reasonable. And I looked into uh, Elegoo at the time. They had just released the Neptune 3 Pro, I think it was. Um, and it was, I think it was on sale or something. I, anyway, it, that was the one I decided to go with. And so we ordered that and I used it to print the holders for these remotes so that they could then be mounted to the wall went through a few different iterations before they fit the way i wanted um and it worked out really well uh, printed those for the old house and and i will be doing a video talking about everything that we did in the old house i just need to get that edited after that was done i started to find other things i could use it for one of those was when i built the kitchen in that house when i made the cabinets it, it was kind of a smaller kitchen and the cabinets were of course custom. Uh, I did go kind of a uh, standard as far as the depth of the cabinets and things like that. But because of where different things were located, the width of the cabinets, some of those were non-standard. And one of those was the drawer to the left of the sink. You know, you've got your cutlery drawer. I couldn't find any, um, cutlery organizers that really fit that drawer the way that I wanted. So, the 3d printer came back out and I 3d printed one of those. Well, it, it was a whole system. Um, I'll see if I have any pictures of that and add those in. And that worked out pretty well. It did. It kind of started me down a rabbit hole though, because that printer wasn't big enough to print the organizer the way I wanted to print it. So I did have to change up the design to match what the machine I had was capable of. And so since then I've kind of expanded a little bit, um, that printer, I've now given it to my brother-in-law, uh, because I, I ended up replacing it. Uh, but I replaced it with two printers. I kind of expanded. This is one, this is the Elegoo Neptune four max. Um, it was specifically because that organizer, the way I wanted it, the way I saw it in my head, I couldn't print it with the printer I had. So this was the biggest one. In fact, I, for like the consumer models, I think this still is the biggest, if I'm not mistaken. I ended up getting this and I, a whole bunch of other ideas popped into my head once I saw how big this is. Like I even used it, um, in a feeder for my chickens to make a cone so that the food would, would distribute evenly to the different feeding ports and a bunch of stuff I'm, I'm working on for my truck. And I also got a bamboo PS P1S P1. Yeah. P1S. That one has a, uh, an enclosure 
which allows you to use different filaments um, that I can't print on this guy and it's a lot faster. And with both of these, it, it was kind of like the, the things I was starting to see that I could do with a 3D printer. My, my initial one just wasn't quite what, what I needed. It was enough to get me started, enough to learn about the different filaments, kind of figure out fusion a little bit and some of the different options for slicing software. And it was a really good, it was a good, a good jumping off point uh, that helped me realize well, this isn't just for little knickknacks. There are actual useful tools and things that I can make by doing this. Like, I don't know how to do any machining. Even if I did, I don't have machining equipment. Um, so for some of those things, this was the next best option. Not for everything, but for some stuff, it's worked out pretty well. It's kind of the things I can, I can make has obviously expanded into to different areas. Uh, I've been working on my truck a lot the last couple of years, trying to make it better for, specifically for camping. Uh, I do a lot of camping now to, and that's kind of, that's become the whole purpose for that truck. It's not so great at hauling supplies anymore. I have a little tow behind uh, truck bed trailer deal that I use for that. But there's a lot of things I want for that, that given that it's an older truck, there's things that just, Nobody makes them for it, and some of them are just, nobody makes them in general for anything. It's just ideas I've had uh, that I wanted to put in there. Like one, one thing that I'm working on right now, and this is why I got the bamboo printer, is I do have a uh, Gen 3 Starlink that I've mounted on the roof of the truck. And the, the roof rack is one that I just made myself when I was in welding school. Um, and so it doesn't match. Like if you look into a lot of the overlanding stuff, there's tons of really nice options for roof racks, but none are made for that truck, uh, not specifically. And this was just my own idea of what I came up with. And so because it was, again, not standard, just kind of my own what came out of here, there wasn't a, an easy way to put a Starlink on the roof. And in my case, that was the best place to put it. So... By using that, that bamboo printer, I was able to use some of the more advanced, well, I don't know if you'd really call them advanced filaments, but the ones that, that some of the more entry-level printers can't do, so ABS and, and ASA. And I wanted to be able to use those types of filaments because this is something that's going to be on the top of my truck all the time, so it's always going to have UV rays on it. It's going to have rain and snow and desert heat. So that's all made. Uh, the current version, which I need to redesign it, is all ASA. Um, because it is one of the more, uh, as I understand it, one of the most UV resistant um, 3D printable filaments. So that's that's worked out pretty well. I just need to revise the design. I'll do probably a whole separate video about that whole process. So anyway, it just it's been interesting to me coming down this road because it was something that initially I thought that's a neat toy. It'll never be useful for me at all, and I was wrong. It's been very useful. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily something for everybody because for one, you got to find somewhere to put it. You know, like when I got the, the Neptune three, I actually had it in our closet on the floor for the longest time. Cause I just didn't have anywhere else to put it. And now like the shop is a mess and there's sawdust everywhere. Not a great place for, um, a 3d printer with all of its little components. I have it out here right now because I've been tuning it and there's more room but where it's probably going to end up is the new shop here uh, actually has a bathroom that we really don't use that much. So I think that's going to become the 3D printing area and move this in there. We'll, we'll see. I don't know if, if I can if I can scrape the pennies together. Eventually, I do want to build. I think I mentioned this when we first moved that I do want to build a bigger shop out back where my chicken coop is now. Um, and then that's where. All of the welding and the woodworking, all of that stuff would move out there. And then this area would become more of, well, when I work from home, this would be where my office is. But on top of that, this is where 3D printers would be. Um, I'd move my sewing machine out here, uh, do another big table like what I've got here that you probably can't see uh, for leather work and, and that sort of thing. It's been fun because there's just, it's it's like a whole new world of, of different creative options for things that you can make and the way you can make them and what they can be for. Um, I do plan to expand a little more eventually. I, I There's some ideas I've come up with that I think I would like to try 
to start selling on my website, which actually expired. I need to renew that. Um, one, one is an idea that turns out somebody else already had the same idea and they sell it on Amazon. Mine's a little bit different, but more or less the, the same idea. So I, I like to use uh, Festool dust extractors while on Festool sanders. And one thing that's always been a pain in the butt with those is the, the cord, the power cord is longer than the hose and they just kind of flop all over, they get twisted around. And so I had this idea of, uh, that came from one of the newer Festool, like my Festool stuff is really old. Um, I think I got it like 12, 15 years ago, something like that. But on some of the newer vacuums, there's like these uh, Velcro straps so that you can hook the ho hook the, the power cord to the hose and, and keep that more organized. And looking at that, it just got me thinking, well, what if I could make a clip that went around the power cord and then clamped on to the hose? I could do more or less that, that same idea. Um, and so I, I have designed some. And as I was working on that, I noticed this other group, I can't remember the guy's name or the company name. I'll, I'll post it because I think theirs is, is pretty good design too. They were, they do more or less the same thing. I don't know if they 3D print them or not, or if it's like injection molded, but either way, it's basically the same idea. A uh, little clamp that hooks on. Um, mine's a little bit different, but the, the actual functionality is, is the same. So like those, I might start uh, making to sell on my website and there might be other things down the road. I, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and kind of see how, how that goes and what other areas this leads me into. I've also thought about maybe not necessarily selling the prints, but selling the file. If there's something good that I come up with, I did have a couple of ideas of things I want to try to design and make. And right now I cannot remember what those were. That's probably something that will be coming down the road. Oh, I remember one of them. This is, this is pretty niche. Uh, but one of my, as, as part of my big camping hobby, one thing that I, and this is what got me into camping again, is uh, time-lapse photography. And the time-lapse gear that I use, the, the company, from what I understand, actually doesn't exist anymore. It's called SYRP, S-Y-R-P, out of New Zealand. Uh, they got bought out by Manfrotto, I think, and then I think Manfrotto just recently kind of shut everything down. Um, but they have these little hockey puck-looking things that are the motion controller for, like, when you're doing the time-lapse, have your camera kind of slowly rotate, take a picture, rotate, take a picture, that kind of thing. And the, the one problem I always had with those is I could charge it up, throw out my backpack, and the power button would always get bumped. So I'd get to where I'm headed and I'd be at half battery capacity because it's been on for the last 12 hours or whatever. So I designed a little spin-on cover um, that mounts, it screws onto the, the threaded, the quarter 20 tripod mount thing that's at the top, like where you would put your ball mount and then your camera screws onto that and keeps the power button covered. Um, since they're kind of gone, I don't know that there's really a market for it anymore, but I was thinking, I know there are people that still use them. Uh, I still use mine a lot. So that is probably one, that'll probably be one of my first products that's not going to sell a lot. But for those that use the SERP uh, Genie Mini and Genie Mini 2, it'll be handy. And I'm working on trying to come up with the same idea, but for the Genie Micro. Um, so those will be out at, at some point for those I'll probably sell the, like I'll have the file available but also you know if, if you have one of those and you want it but you don't have a 3d printer I'll, I'll have the actual physical thing available too that's what got me into 3d printing is it for everybody probably not is it actually useful for things besides knickknacks yes it is and I do see myself doing a lot more of this down the road um, it's not going to replace some of the traditional wooden furniture making that I do but I do have an idea for a 3d printed chair that I want to play with uh, this isn't big enough to print it all as as one piece it would have to be in in sections that you then assemble but actually the same company Elegoo they they have a newer printer that's even bigger um, I think it'd be cool to have one I just it's more money than I want to spend on a 3d printer and I'd have to rearrange some things to have room for it because it can print up to almost three feet wide I think and like three and a half feet high so, something crazy I think that would just be fun to play with and see what I can come up with anyway I just wanted to talk a little bit about the 3d printers because I think they're neat and it's been forever since I've done a video like a year I think um so just so people know I'm still alive and uh this is kind of where 
This is another offshoot. Um, years When I first started this channel, it was called Sawdust is Life and it was only woodworking. And a couple years ago, I changed that to Bits and Wood because while woodworking is still the main kind of area, that's about the same time that I went to welding school and kind of started to uh, broaden the making that I do. Uh, I think that's also when I got my industrial sewing machine. So there's just, I was changing the name because there's a lot of different things that I make that don't really have anything to do with wood. And this is one of them. So you can expect to see a little more 3D printer content. It's not going to become the main thing of this channel, but there will be more of it as I get more things figured out and uh, come up with, with more uses for these. So, But I do still have a lot of furniture I need to make that's going to be mostly wood. Anyway, there, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, hopefully. We'll see. Who knows? I may take another year off. We'll just have to see how things go. That's 3D printers. That's why I have them in the shop and where they are helpful for me. And there will be more of this. And if that interests you or any of the other stuff I do in the shop, please subscribe. Thank you for watching. And uh, we'll see you next time.